it's a one that is the 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 trigger for the celiac and the autoimmune and the things it's it's not a2 so that's why in the raw milk the raw milk movement right now there is a push for raw milk dairies uh they're they're aware of this but this this development of of predominantly a1 milk has been many decades developing and there simply aren't it, it it takes time for farmers to uh, get through the a the a the a one you know milk and get the genetics for a two. There are now hundred percent a two a two dairies, but uh, um, they're 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 definitely uh, pardon the pun they're definitely the cream of the crop. Uh, <laughs> in, in, you know in the raw milk movement the 100% A2A2 dairies here here at at, at our farm uh we sell 100% A2A2 grass-fed um milk from a, from a, a a Mennonite a Mennonite dairy about 30 miles away that uh, that has tested all their cows and their cows are not Holsteins they're the old low-line Frisians uh genetics from New Zealand from way back in the you know 1930s and uh, they don't they don't give as much milk as a big old Holstein, but um, it's all A two A two. It's good stuff. Yes, yes, and A two as we're learning in the scientific literature, they're kind of catching up that this A two milk can have benefits. Um, so, for instance, as I said, the A one casein looks like uh, can look like gluten and initiate an immune response. And we're thinking the A two casein does actually not look structurally similar enough to gluten to initiate that immune response. Now, is it theoretically possible that A2 casein can trigger an immune response through molecular mimicry? Yes, but the chance is much lower, obviously, than with A1 casein. Um, so that means people with gluten sensitivity may in fact be able to consume A2 dairy. Also, A2 milk doesn't contain the same morphine-like compounds that A1 milk contains. So A1 casein contains a subprotein known as casomorphin. It's released when the body digests the A1 protein. And just like the name sounds, casomorphine looks and acts like morphine. It suppresses pain. So when you drink A1 milk, you tend to have a feel good response to it. Right. And so oftentimes when I'm working with clients and I'm telling them that dairy is one of the top triggers for autoimmune disease, they won't believe me because they'll say no, because when I drink milk, I feel good. Right. So how can something that makes me feel good be causing me to be inflamed and exacerbate my sickness? The problem is that casomorphin overrides the pain. Right. And it gives you this kind of high feeling, which addicts you to it. So if even if so, even if it's causing the inflammation, it can actually override the pain, keep you addicted to it. So you keep drinking the very same thing that's causing you to be sick. Now, the, the casomorphine compounds in a two milk have totally different functions than the compounds in the a one milk. So. Um, we know that the digestion of the A1 casein can actually contribute to diseases and aging. Um, literature will show um, associations between, you know, all different types of autoimmune conditions, autoimmune and chronic conditions. But we know that the A2 casein, when it's broken down in the body, it actually has antihypertensive properties and it has antioxidant properties. So you can consume the A2 milk and boost your level, for example, of glutathione, which glutathione is one of the most powerful antioxidants that we know of in the body. Um, and it has a major role in things like immune response and defense against disease and gene expression. So um, A2 casein can actually help protect you from disease as we're finding. So these are very different um, very different functions that we see, even though they're both like, like cow milk, that's a one, a one versus cow milk, that's a two, a two. I'm saying they're not equal because they're both raw. They're both from a cow. 
but A2A2 mel can actually benefit you and lower your risk of disease in some individuals where A1 mel can actually fuel disease in some individuals. And, you know, goat milk is largely A2 milk. So that would fall under this, you know, this healthier categories of milk. And is that one of the reasons why historically, uh, Sina, is that one of the reasons historically why goat milk has, has tended to be the preferred milk for, um, uh, you know, for, for medicinal reasons and for babies as opposed to cow's milk, simply because virtually all goat's milk is A2 as opposed to cow's milk? Yeah. And, but there's also, I mean, yes, that is true, but we also, we didn't always know about A2, right? So part of it right. was a size factor. So when you're thinking about other components that are in milk, one of the components is this insulin like growth, growth factor. All right. And so a cow is much bigger than a goat, right? Typically a dairy cow is bigger than a goat. And while we also <laughs> <Wait>. have, <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't want to say 100% of the time, there could be an anomaly, I don't know, but they're, they seem to be smaller. Um, and people are actually yeah. going towards like these dwarf goats, right? Because one reason is because um, the level of insulin-like growth factor is lower 